So Emma, is life just another ripoff of Alien? Well. Hey everybody, welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker back with you. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've done a video, but I am back and this time I'm talking about the new sci-fi horror movie, Life. And let's start off with a drink. The drink is called The Cradle of Life. The Cradle of Life is really simple. It's one part spiced rum, one part white rum, two parts lemon juice, two parts lime juice, and two parts orange juice. Put into a shaker, shake it up, and uh, served in a rocks glass with well, rocks. All right, so let's start this off. We got one of the spiced rum, one of the white rum, and then two parts of everything else. So, Life. Life is directed by uh, Daniel Espinosa and written by Rhett Reese and Paul Wernicke and stars Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Rebecca Ferguson, and Ryan Reynolds. Uh, they are all astronauts who have recovered a Mars probe and discover that the Mars probe has life on it. Now, the way this movie separates itself from films like Alien, like I mentioned before, is that this movie isn't just about um, a scary alien trying to kill everybody on board a, you know, a, a spaceship, but it's about um, life, you know, a, a new life form that's discovered that is just really trying to survive, which I felt very fascinating. I mean, it's Jeff Goldblum who put it best. But life uh, finds a way and see how it is. Ooh, apparently the cradle of life is very sour. Pretty good though, give it a try. Now this is a very well-made little sci-fi horror movie. I mean, Daniel Espinosa knows what he's doing. He knows how to move the camera and, uh, and, and, and the effects are top notch. I mean, he starts off the movie with this amazing one shot that takes you through the ship and, <clears throat> and shows you how the filmmakers are going to handle zero gravity. Um, it does throw the audience kind of in the middle of things and uh, it's, it, it, it doesn't quite tell you what's going on or why everyone's doing what they're doing. You know the scene is tense and you know that the characters are doing something that they haven't been trained for, but that's not the point of the scene. The point of the scene is to take you through the, take you through the ship and show you the ship and also introduce you to the characters. And this is kind of a dangerous way to start your movie because you are relying on the audience to go along with something even though they don't know what's going on. Um, and I personally think it's a really brilliant way to start your movie. Now this movie has a small but wonderful cast. I mean, there's only six cast members, but they all play their parts wonderfully. Um, there's a biochemist played by Ariane Bakare who when he's on Earth, when the character's on Earth, he's in a wheelchair. Um, but when he's in in zero gravity, he can kind of you know be upright and 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 tall like everybody else. And the effects on his legs that have atrophied so much are uh, just simply astounding. Um, another actor that I've uh, grown really fond of is Hiroyuki Sonata from The Wolverine and Forty Seven Ronin, and he is just uh, really amazing in this. He's his facial. He's just got such a an expressive face without saying a lot. Um, also, uh, Ryan Reynolds feels right at home in this, which makes sense because one of the writers of this is also one of the writers of Deadpool, and they really love writing dialogue for Reynolds. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal kind of round out the cast really well. They're kind of the anchor of the story. Now, this movie is super suspenseful and does tension really well. And like I said before, the effects are top notch, especially with the alien. Unfortunately, I am kind of a geek who likes kind of indie, indie uh, video games. And to be honest, the alien kind of reminded me of Octodad, which 
Uh, <laughs> which when he's when the alien's in zero G and is moving around, it just looked a lot like Octodad, and I kind of wanted him to have like a fedora on and a suit and be voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch every so often. It's a little silly, and that's just my problem, but uh, I just thought that was really funny. Um, the other problem I had uh, with this is that the. Uh, the filmmakers, once again, are trying to give a lot of credit to the audience, which is usually great, but uh, there are some editing points where where I, I honestly thought I missed something and I didn't go to the bathroom or anything uh, but it, it cuts to a certain thing that's happening and, and all of a sudden there's this kind of action suspense scene which you, you're sort of just kind of uh, it, it's just kind of jarring just to be thrown into it like that. Also there are multiple shots of like screens with like diagrams and pictures and readouts and stuff like that that they never really explain which again it's fine I don't need to be you know spoon fed everything but um but I didn't know what they meant, and uh, the characters seemed to be fine or upset with what they were looking at, so I assumed they were either good or bad, but I was just like, I, I don't know what that means, but we'll just continue on. Look, all in all, this is a really solid, suspenseful, you know, sci-fi horror movie. I mean, they, they really do tension very well, and I quite enjoyed myself. I mean, it's a very simple premise, and it had a nice, surprising ending, which, you know, you don't always get. So I'm going to give this movie a four out of five drinks. It's well worth the watch. Uh, go check it out. And uh, here's to you, Octodad. Here's to everybody else. Have a drink on me. Let me know what your favorite sci-fi horror movie is. Event Horizon is actually a pretty good one. And if you like this, sit back, have a drink, hit subscribe, and uh, check out more of my stuff. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.